Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. You can see I'm outside in my backyard because I have this giant oversized sign that my studio is too small for. Now I'm going to show you how I put together this sign. Um, this was quite a few steps, but I'm very proud of the progress that I made with it. So we are going to be using quarter inch plywood for this sign. And I also used my pass through feature for the name. Now this was a really fun project. It took a little bit of time, but it actually was very easy to do. And I even use leaf designs from Chameleon Cuddles, and I'll link that in the description for you. So if you're excited about this video, just go ahead and give it a like now. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and check out the link in the description and find out how you can save up to $500 on a new Glowforge. Hey everyone, so I am going to drop you into um, a couple steps into this process. I'll explain what I did and then we'll move on to the next step. So this is kind of a base that I'm using for my sign. I'm in Silhouette Studio. Now I'm going to click on this right side over here. This is my page setup and you can see I have this set up to be 48 inches wide and 24 inches tall. So we're doing a big sign. We're doing an oversized one. I like doing these signs in particular because um, most hardware stores will sell a sheet of plywood in this size. So um, I don't have to do any, any cutting. I can just go from there. So I went through and you can see, I like to show you kind of what I'm working with and what kind of fonts we're doing. So you can see I tested out some fonts and then I landed on this set right here that I really like. So this font is called Sermier or Sermier, if it's French. I'll link it in the description. And then this one is More Dreams. So I believe both of these are from font bundles. Not Yeah, font bundles, design bundles, either one. And so I'm going to set this up right here. So I'm going to hold down Shift and grab Piper so I have both Isabel and Piper selected. I'm going to change this to a cute little creamy off-white color. That's more white, but you know what I mean. So we're going to set this up right here and um, let's go ahead and grab this and scooch it down a tiny bit. The reason why is because we're putting our leaves here. So you can see this is what it will look like, okay? So you can have it look however you'd like. I'm going to throw a couple on there. I don't know if I'm going to set it up the exact same way as this, but um, we'll kind of go from there. So this leaf set is from Chameleon Cuttables. I really, really enjoy using designs from her. So um, I'll link this pack in the description as well. So just for the sake of time, I'm gonna very quickly just throw some on there. So we have this leaf here. I'm going to right click, flip horizontally, turn this a little bit more. And you can see it's gonna be overlapping. I'm gonna show you how we fix that, but I'm just throwing a couple in here for now. Got this little leafy. All right, and then we had like a leaf over here, I believe. No, it was like this one. It was this leaf. Let's turn it using this little green dot and stretch this out. You can resize something by using, oops, by using the corners like this. And I'm actually gonna right click and flip this horizontally and set it up more like this. Again, I'm going very quickly. Um, you can arrange whatever leaves you would like and whatever spot you would like. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. I'm actually gonna bring my name up a tiny, a hair. You can see I made these leaves a lot bigger. So let's just grab all of this here. I'm gonna hold down shift to let go of the background. Shift. Okay, we have it like that, we have it like this. I think I put a little leaf over here. And we're gonna change the colors, like we're gonna fix all of this. We are simply just doing placement right now. Now I'm going over many steps in this video, so if designing is not what you're looking for, feel free to go to the next section. I'll, I'll see you there. All right, so we'll go right here. I keep grabbing that background. I'm hitting Control Z to go back, by the way. All right, and let's see how I did that over here. So we'll do this little leafy. 
And let's right click flip horizontally. Turn it like this. Let's stretch this out. Again, we're going to make alterations to this. Okay. And then that little leaf over there. I'm uh, control Z. Oops. Control Z. I am going to hold down the alt button, click and drag, bring that over here. I'm actually going to right click, flip horizontally. So it faces out that way and kind of go from there. So now that these leaves are set, we need to cut off the edges. We need to crop them. Now, typically I would group them all together and crop them together. But for some reason, when I do that, it actually merges them into one shape and I can't undo it. So we're gonna do them one at a time, which is unfortunate, but that's how it is. So I'm gonna hover over this square and we're gonna hit the Alt button. And what this did, we're gonna hold down Alt and click. What this is, it made a copy and it put it on top. So we're gonna go through, we have our square selected, hold down Shift, click on this leaf, and this leaf right here, uh, no. Click on that leaf, we'll go to Modify, Crop. So you can see now that has taken on the shape of that and I can kind of change the color to what I want. So you can see we have that there. So now we're gonna repeat the process, Alt, hold Shift, click that, Crop. Now again, I would much rather you can I would much rather do them together, but I realize it welded them and I don't want that. So you can see we have that right there. I'm going to right click, group that together because one of this was separated. So now you have that green. Let me just choose a different green. Uh, I hate that. So you have that green there. This one we can change to like this light green, whatever. Oh no. All right, so we have that. Now let's just keep repeating. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm going to highlight all of these right here. And um, we wanna take off our line color. They're kind of distracting. So let's just go through, hold shift, grab these right here. This top left over here, just do this little cross hatch. It takes the lines off. And then we'll just repeat it with these two. Okay, so the final step is that we need to make space and we need to figure out which leaves go on top. So if you look over here, those overlap, super easy. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delegate which leaves go on top. So I want this big monstera leaf on top. I'm gonna click on it, right click, um, bring to front. So now it's at the top. And now we're gonna hold down shift, grab these two back leaves. And I want to group them together. So right click, group. So now we're gonna create space between this leaf and the background. You can see right here, there's some space right there. So we're gonna select our leaf, go to the offset panel over here on the right. Offset, you can see it creates one. It, it's defaulted to 0 0.125, I think that's perfect. Hit apply, and now hold down shift and grab your group of leaves back here. So this offset's gonna cut through those leaves like a cookie cutter, it's gonna take out that excess. And the way that subtract, this is going to be a subtract, and the way that it works is it subtracts the top object from the bottom object. So if we don't group those two leaves, it'll have, um, it'll be like top right here, middle, bottom, or vice versa. So if we group these together, it'll be treated together. So we'll just go over to modify over here on the right, subtract, so check it out. Now the only thing you wanna do, what I did, is I got rid of these little inner pieces. And so my trick with something like that is when I have a ton of stuff selected, you can hold down shift and deselect what you want to keep. So shift, click there, click there. So now everything selected are the little pieces you're getting rid of. So I'm just gonna hit delete. There we go. 
So I'm going to repeat the process for these. It's very similar. Um, again, I am doing a more complex process. F please make sure you watch this over again if you you know, if you're still learning. Um, I do go over this in quite a few videos, so if you're not subscribed, this would be a great time to just go ahead and subscribe. Um, so let me go ahead and finish these, and we're going to move on to prepping for cutting. All right, so we're done with that. We're pretty much ready to cut. We do need to do one more thing. So this is a script font, which is going to have overlapping lines. Let me go and turn on a line color so you can see. So I turn it green so you can see we have that overlapping there. So we're just going to right click, uh, weld. And then because this is one word, I like to make this one big object in the software. It's very similar to grouping, but we're going to right click, make compound path. That's all set. And then I'm going to make this compound path again. Um, even though it's not a script font, I like to do that because it'll convert my font from a font to lines and make it easier to convert over. So we're going to do this in multiple stages. I believe I have another clip coming up where I'm doing that over here. So that's the design section. I'll see you in just a minute as we set it up to cut. Okay, so we're just going to do a voiceover for the rest of this. Now I am taking my name, holding shift, selecting it. And now I actually want to grab the entire thing. So I'm taking my mouse, clicking and dragging, and I'm holding down shift and clicking on the background. This deselects the background, but allows me to keep all of my words. So now I can just save selection, save it to hard drive as an SVG. So you'll just save it over there. But before I do it, I realized that I forgot to draw a box around it. So when you draw a box around this, I'm going to use this as my guide to align my design. So we're going to take this and I'm just going to center my word in the middle of this box. You can see I have a little bit of overlap with these leaves, so I just need to adjust a tiny bit. But this makes it easier to cut, but it also uh, makes it easier to place. So I'm saving that to my hard drive, and you want to make sure that you change it to SVG. So here, just naming it. I did the name cut and then choose SVG and then you're all set to go. So we'll open this in the Glowforge software. You just go to create new blank design or upload. So I'm going to upload from file and choose it in here. So you'll see I'm just over here looking for my placement where I saved it, I guess. So there it is, and you'll see on the right side, it's prepared and it's being arranged, processing, just getting it ready to go. And you'll see it rendering. In the top left corner, you see our name. Okay, so it comes in sideways. So it comes in how you want it. So you click those three dots and turn on Pro Pass Through. So you see how the screen changed? So it adjusted, you're gonna see that dotted line that indicates like the end of that cut. So I'm going to take my design and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it with the front of the name right there. And I'm going to set it up like this. So you want the bottom of your design at the bottom of the, the workspace. And then you want to feed in your pass through piece. So you're going to feed in your piece through the back of your machine. And right here you can see me rearranging. I want to have my text up there first. So I'm gonna do cut, and then I'm selecting Birch here, which is a speed of 170. This is wrong, do speed of 140. I accidentally set this to eighth inch, not quarter inch. So this cut actually didn't go through, I had to redo it. But you can see, I just went and set my focus. You can see in the top right corner, it's focusing. I'm doing that because I have quarter inch uh, wood. I want to make sure my camera has an accurate I don't know, angle of my cutting space and where I am on the wood. This may take a while, but you'll see it's ready. So you see it adjusted a little bit. And then if I were to go and move this, you're going to see like a little gray area for my safe cutting space. So you just wanna make sure your design is within your safe cutting space. You can see that line right here. I think when I was recording this right now, I was adjusting the wood or maybe I walked away, who knows. Um, but you can see there's my design. So you want to have your design start with the bottom 
of the design at the edge here because it feeds from the back. So it's going to continue on as you go from the back to the front. And here I am actually doing it. So you can see that gray area. So I'm dragging this so that it's right on the edge of it. And you may want to check your design all the way through to make sure it doesn't overlap further. And now I just hit print. So it's preparing to print. Now this is going to give me the time for the first pass. This doesn't give me the time for the entire job. This is going to take three minutes and nine seconds. So let's look at some time lapses of my cutting. So you can see here's my cut. Full disclosure, this was my first cut that did not have the right settings, but it's the same process. I did 140 speed and this is quarter inch birch plywood. Again, please make sure you're test cutting. So you can see the screen will tell me to shift my material forward. So you take your material from the back and you push it in. So there's about three inches left. And now you can see it's aligning. I've pushed in the material and now it's kind of finding where to place it. So this next process actually takes quite a while. I'm cutting out sections so you can see what your screen will look like. So you can see now my screen shows me where my material was when I pushed it forward. So now this is like the the five minute section. This is going to take it, look at it. You're going to see the arm take pictures. You'll see a light turn on near your laser head and check it out. So now you can see that's where it's lined up. You don't need to set your focus. Sometimes it looks like it's misaligned, but trust your machine. It has not steered me wrong with the alignment. I've had more issues wrong with like it shutting off or whatever than the alignment being wrong. So you can see I've prepared it. This is going to take me through and it's going to tell me how long for this cut, remember. So this is just under four minutes. Now, this is going to be a time lapse of all the cutting. So you're gonna see the cut, and then you'll see in between the cut, uh, the arm going over, taking pictures. You might get a glimpse of like a little light, just goes back and forth. Oh yeah, you know, this is where it needs to be. And now we're ready to cut. So you'll see it's going through. I have pressed cut in the software. It doesn't just do it automatically, but you already saw that. There's the back of my head, didn't realize it was there, but you know, whatever. So now we're moving on to the painting. So I used acrylic paint and a sponge brush to just dab it on. Now, if this was something I was doing more often, I would 100% be using spray paint. Uh, since this was a one-off, you know, for now, I just used acrylic paint because I bought this white color and the three greens that you'll see in the next clip from Michael's acrylic paint and the total was three dollars so not a bad deal in my opinion and I'll link the colors I use in the description below so you can see I'm painting the leaves I'm not going to show you how I cut the leaves because it's pretty standard I just you know exported them one by one or in groups and cut this on quarter inch birch so some of it, I try to use the spare pieces from my pass through. I also have quarter inch birch on hand at my house. So just going through using my sponge brush and I'm doing two layers on each. These green ones here could have used more. So I think after this, I did paint them a little bit more. Now here's my guide. I'm measuring down from how far the corners I want my word to be. So you can see I use my uh, measuring tape and I used a level to make sure it was straight and I taped it down with painter's tape. So this is just wood glue. I wanted to be careful. I didn't want it to seep out. So I like to either put some on a paintbrush or put a little bit down and wood glue it on there. And here I am painting the little letters because I forgot to paint them earlier. So I just took a paper towel and I'm just dabbing them with the sponge brush. This, I'm just showing you one coat, but I did do two coats with this. And this is the vanilla color of acrylic paint from Michael's Arts and Crafts. So we have that all set there. And now I placed my guide right back in. I didn't have to tape it because it already had the words as a guide. So now I'm just using a little paintbrush and I'm painting my wood glue on there. So you don't need to do it too heavy, but you do need to have enough to get it to stick. I also put weights down on top of this after to kind of get it to cure. And so I made sure it was like there secure before I gave it to my friend. Now the reason why I'm doing wood glue as opposed to 3M that I normally do is one, I don't wanna put that much 3M on my birch, but two, wood glue tends to work a little bit better when you're working with wood. I know it's revolutionary because it's wood glue, but that's what we did. So we're just painting this down. I'm using a picture on my computer as a guide and we're just placing it on there. So I'm pretty proud of it. 
now you're gonna see me talk about it in just a second. Um, so I hope you liked it. Oh, and there's my little headband for my makeup. Check it out. This is my finished product. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to put it up in the baby's nursery for my friend. Um, at the time of filming this, she is like about to have this baby. So it's last minute, but I'm really, really happy about it. So again, this is using the pass-through feature and quarter-inch plywood. I use the leaf designs from Chameleon Cuttables, and I just overall really happy with how it turned out. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave it a like. Please let me know in the comments your favorite part, if this is something that you wanna do. And again, if you're watching and you want to get your, a Glowforge of your own, check out the link in the description to save up to $500 on a new machine.